Hey, everybody, it's the BKBK podcast where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Brian Taylor, Kerry Taylor, and Captain Kyle McKenna. So, well, folks, we haven't seen you in a while, and that, that thing is called life, family, COVID, and a bunch of other variables that prevented us from broadcasting for a few months. But Team BKBK is glad to be back and also happy to talk about the crazy new year of football in the NFL. That's right. That's right. And as you know, the NFL's new year kicks off in mid-March. And oh boy, tons of stuff have been going on. Most sports networks and sports shows and stuff have been focusing on like Tom Brady. Who and cares Aaron about Hopkins. that guy? <laughs> yeah, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But how about we focus on the New York Jets for this one? Let's unpack their free agency, upcoming draft, and what else is needed so that the Jets can have a more productive 2022 season. Let's go. All right. So, listen. First of all, happy to be back. Happy to see everybody. You know, my fellow Baldwinites, right? You know That's what I'm right. saying? I'm happy that everyone's doing well. Of course, we keep in touch just about every single day, but we haven't done this in a while, so... I'm just happy to see all of you, and I'm happy that our fans and people that watch the show are seeing us right now. So salute to you guys. Salute to everyone. And uh, just to kind of just get this thing going, let's talk some Jets football, yeah? Sure. So free agency is started, okay? We've got some acquisitions. Let's talk about the acquisitions of the New York Jets. Let's talk about, you know, what we've done so far, what Joe Douglas has done. You know, should we be the one sitting in the GM chair or is Joe Douglas like, no, no, why don't you guys take a chill? I got this, you know, <laughs> so talk to me about that a little bit. Brian, why don't you start? Because I hear you giggling like a little uh, like a little goat back there. Man. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> as I let that go, I, I can always take the chair, baby. You know what I'm saying? I always think I could do a great job at it. But, you know, if I were to look at what Joe Douglas has been able to do this year, in free agency, this is by far his best free agency period. I, I think, um, I think it's not really going out on a limb and saying that so far, right? Uh, now, obviously, you got to see how it all plays itself out and how the year goes and and what have you. But when you look at Lakin Tomlinson, you know, guard uh, from San Francisco that we were able to pull in. No, 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 no. from Jimmy Cut, Lord of Mercy. Oh. <laughs> Kingston. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> went, 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 went. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, when you look at that um, acquisition right there, it just shows that he, you know, went to the top of the market for the guard role um, for the right guard um, for the New York Jets and uh, wasn't top, top, right? Because you got the guy from Washington that got more money. Ultimately, he was, went to the Jets. He, he was the number two, so there were two top tier guards available in free in free agency. It was uh, Brandon Scherf from Washington. Yep, and right below him was Lakin Tomlinson. So no fall off. I mean, when you look at his uh, pro football focus grades and stuff over the last three four years, I mean, he's done a great job. Uh, I think he'll definitely help out overall with the offensive line play. Right guard was definitely an issue for us last year and the year before, for that matter. Um, you look at the rest of the line, it was pretty good overall, right? Just with that right guard, we really couldn't couldn't solve for. So uh, great getting somebody like that in there, help out with the run game, helping out with the pass game, just having some consistency there. Um, I like the tight ends that we picked up too, right? CJ, Uzama, um, and also picking up Conklin uh, from Minnesota. I love the fact that we took a tandem approach to that. Uh, both of those were ascending players. Um, you look at Izama, I mean, they were in the Super Bowl, right? You're talking about the Bengals. Uh, when you look at San Francisco and where we're bringing Tomlinson from, a winning program, right? Um, so, you know, these are the things that I think ultimately will propel us. And also, Izama, from what I understand, is a great locker room guy as well. So somebody, when the chips are down, maybe that's um, speech time for him. But, again, helping our young quarterback out. Those three pieces right there ultimately will. Security blankets, um, things that we can do with those two tight ends, being able to catch the ball, 
uh, combined. I think they had 110 catches, over a thousand yards um, between the two of them. So you know, I think it's um, we've definitely done some good things defensively. Picked up a safety, you know, picked up a corner. We'll see ultimately if that those are going to be plus players for us. Uh, the cornerback, to your point, uh, Brandon was a little small, right at five nine, but. He definitely did his thing out in Seattle as far as grades are concerned, as far as pro football focus is concerned. And I don't know much about him, so that's all I can really look at um, from that perspective. But um, So, I, listen, I, I think we we spent money. Could we have done some things? Did we leave some things on the table? Sure, like edge rusher, and I'm sure somebody's going to you know, touch upon that. Uh, but it's hard. You know, there's not a lot of those folks out there at edge that we could bring in that we're going to be difference makers. They're either going to be folks that are going to be tagged ultimately or, you know, everybody wants them at the end of the day. So um, so I was happy with what he, meaning J.D., was able to do this year. And that sets you up for the draft at number four where you're like, what do you do, right? Before, you're like, all right, we got to go offensive line. We got to go. Edge, obviously, is something that we still have to address. But like I said, I, 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 I liked what he was able to do so far in free agency, um, hats off to JD. There we go. Good, good. You know, I'm glad you touched on the draft, but I don't want to touch on it too hard because that's going to be in our next segment. I want to hear from Captain Kyle McKenna. Um, what are your thoughts about Joe Douglas's free agency um, and, and what, you know, basically what he's done and, and his approach? So I would agree with Brian uh, pretty wholeheartedly as far as the approach and the overall value of the uh of the acquisitions and and everything like that i've kind of taken a a little bit different of a a look at this as i've gone through it and and tried to comp it with jacksonville because if you really look at it the thing that's 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 really trending up with joe douglas is the desirability of the new york jets as a free agent destination whereas where we were last year as compared to where we are this year is a kind of a function of how people feel about Sala and how people feel it's going, um, whether it's going in the right direction or not. Zach Wilson, what Zach Wilson's potential is and and things like that. So when you look at the the comparison with the Jaguars, the Jaguars have had to spend much more money to get the people that they want than we've had to do um, through through, through Joe Joe Douglas's um, front office. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't overswing. Um, he, he, he gets value for what he wants. He doesn't, um, he doesn't go out and, and, and take a, a grab at somebody yet. I mean, free agency isn't over yet, but he's not making the splash signing that doesn't make sense for the cap. Whereas when you look at even like comparing like a Christian Kirk and a Braxton Berrios, Braxton Berrios came in for under what we in our tech spread would have signed him for. I think we were all in agreement that we would have spent up to 9 million a year on Braxton Barrios, and yep. I think he got him for like 7.4. Six. Uh, he got him for six. So um, I think that means that he understands the market for that guy a little bit more than than we do, um, being, you know, embedded. But when you pay Christian Kirk, and what, anybody have the number that Christian Kirk got? It was like think, in I the think, 20s, right? It, it was uh, four I years, was, 72 million. Yeah. I don't know how much guaranteed. You have that number, B? I don't it's like know. 18 million. Oh, guaranteed? I don't know. Guaranteed, I don't know either. Yeah. But it was that's astronomical for somebody that is like a fringe player, in my opinion. I, I don't, I don't see him as somebody that you're gonna pay. Um, what is that? 18 million per right. on average. Well, well, Brian, well, so, I was so, about to say five years, 72, and you hopped in and correct. And you know, before I even said, you said four years, 72. Yeah. That's even worse. And talk about somebody who's not. A number one receiver, right, Brian? You love talking so, about it. absolutely. We we need one too, just like they do. <laughs> so so to, to finish my thought though, whether whether you you're looking at Christian Kirk's ceiling or you're looking at him at floor, um, if his ceiling is is this eighteen million dollar receiver, he's still a slot. He's not an outside receiver. He he works in the slot. That's that's his niche. I don't I don't see them looking at Christian Kirk the same way that we may be looking at Elijah Moore as an as an inside outside guy. So when you look at those comps, you know, and Jacksonville being like in that bottom tier of the league with us, it's very, very uh I guess encouraging that 
the Jets are able to get for the value that they're getting them at, free agents to come and play for us um, of the caliber that we're getting um, when Jacksonville has to overpay to get somebody to not leave the building when they come in uh, you know, and offer them a contract. With that said, the free agent signings that we've done also say a lot about where this offense is going. You know, you, you sign those two tight ends, super production out of them, also trending up. Um, you know, you went from, you know, 50 passes caught combined for Jets tight ends last year, um, and now you're bringing in 110 um, from free agency. And I think that they have a chance to eclipse those numbers if they become those safety blankets that Zach Wilson needs, along with a Michael Carter and a running game and, you know, whatever else we do to strengthen up that um, that tight end room in the draft because there are some some good tight ends in this draft. So um, on the offensive side of the ball, some great stuff. On the defensive side of the ball, the Whitehead signing is great. Everything I've heard about Whitehead as far as the human being and the player, um, there's an upgrade there. I would like to see the Jets go after the Honey Badger. I, he's out there. Uh, he's an immediate upgrade. He's Locked not – He's 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 good in the locker room. He calls defenses. Um, you know he he can bring a presence to our defense in that that defensive backfield that could supercharge it. So I would like I, if he's going to make a splash, uh, Joe Douglas. That's where I'd like to see the splash made because he struck out on Chandler Jones, which would have been great. Von Miller would have been great. Again, it's just like the Joe Tunney thing last year. Did we ever really have a chance? I don't know, um, but there are edge guys to make our front seven better in the draft. There are linebackers to make our, our front seven better in the draft. The Honey Badger will make our defensive backfield um, into something that, that could really contend um, and I think would help Robert Sala out and, and over with the defense. 100%. Kerry, let me hear from you. Yeah, I mean, I am very pleased with the uh, Joe Douglas balanced approach um, of free agent signings. Um, you know, I, I, you know me. I've always been about about the um, dollars and cents. If it doesn't make uh, sense, then it's you're not going to cost. You're not going to use that money, right? The dollars are not going to be representative of your play on the field. And we can't we don't we can't afford to spend a significant amount of money on a specific player um, if we could utilize that money on players that may not be as um, you know uh, impactful on the field. But you know we need we need specific areas. We have specific areas of need, and we have several specific areas of need. So we can't spend a significant amount of money on one position. So, which is the reason why we didn't spend a significant amount of money on the safety position and on the edge position and on the wide receiver position and on the uh, guard position, um, you know, and on the corner position. We, we just have too many needs. Um, when you know that they should, in fact, expend uh, a draft pick on, a, um, on an edge. Right when you have Carl Lawson, who you signed last year, to a significant amount of money, so you're not going to sign another edge player at a significant level of of money uh, yeah. if you already have Carl Lawson under under contract. Well, yeah, I mean, you you might. I mean, if if you got the money and it, and it makes sense ultimately to do that, but um, if you don't, if you haven't hadn't already spent on Carl Lawson, I would say yes. I would say we could have gone after um. Uh, but it sounds like we wouldn't have to Chandler Jones. So, I mean, we weren't, we weren't well, going to pay him did, well, under did we, the market. Right. Know? So like, we were going to pay, but we weren't going to pay him what he ended up receiving. No. No. And that's my, and that's, that's specifically my point. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what did he end up receiving? Uh, looks like three years, 51 million. What's that? Okay, 17 yeah. per? Carl Lawson is a $15.3 million cap. Hit. Right. Right. Uh, this, just so, this so, year. So, but, yeah, but, I'm, but but Chandler but Jones look, is a better player overall. We're, I'm not saying we, I, we're not saying he isn't. Agent. I'm not saying he isn't. Okay. What I'm saying is that you can't you can't afford to have them both under those those two contracts expended that amount of resources on those two positions when you know you have other positions to fill, right? And and what and and it, and it seems like 
the the philosophy in which they went about um, free agency reflects that. You have a safety in Whitehead who I believe is the top third safety in the league, right? Who yeah, you signed for fourteen million dollars total, total mm-hmm. for two years, right? Um, so you could still expend some resources because to me he's a strong safety, right? So you could still expend some resources on a free safety, which you know, um, which I you know I, I uh, echo your sentiment, coach, in terms of maybe signing the honey badger if if he's available, right? Um, you know, and the other, right? So available. And 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 then the other thing is, is, then you have to see how much money you have left. But the other thing is that we still we still haven't addressed defensive line. We haven't addressed interior defensive line. So an opportunity might have been missed in maybe signing Fletcher Cox, you know, um, to I, help. I don't think he signed yet. I mean, no, but, no, he did. Oh, he, he, he resigned. He, did, he resigned with Philly. Okay, right. No, but re- you know, um, you never had an opportunity today. though. I, I, that that's when it's like, did we miss the opportunity, or we really never had? One? Well, yeah, yes, right. yeah, right. It could it could have been, it could have been. But but I'm the point I'm making is that we still have that that's still an area of sure. need. That's still sure. an area of need. We sure. still have is the possibility. I think Rankins is not under under contract. Is or is he? He, he is. He is. I think he's under contract, but we could cut him probably with minimal cap hit. Right. I can. I, I can he give you. I can give, I can. Up. I can give you that that data on the dead money on Rankins itself. Uh, yeah. So, so, so basically, but, um, it's, but to, set, but, it's, it's less than a million. It's seven hundred fifty k. Right, but oh, to, but to finish, my my overall point is that he they opened the purse strings more so this year sure. than they did last year. Sure. Um, and what what I do believe, my philosophy of you sh- one third of your team should be ranked in the top at the top third of their position for you to have some type of significant success in this league. And I feel like all of the um new signers. New signees are in that category, especially when you factor in Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama, who b- might be both tight end positions. To me, if this is the t- these this is the best um, position um, signing mm-hmm. free agency signing that I think they've had in a in a long time in terms of what these two guys do. They they are at the same position, however, they do different things. Right, so I see Tyler Conklin as more of a of a Kittle kind of guy, mm-hmm. where he's blocking, he's in line blocking, he is blocking on the edge, um, pass rushers, and he goes out in coverage, in a, right, in the slot, in the slot. And I, but I see CJ not as not so much as that, but I see CJ as a significant um, mismatch issue, mm-hmm. right, where he's a he's a safety blanket for red zone. right, say red zone. Safety blanket, middle of the field. Um, maybe not. You maybe you're not going to put him in at at you know at you know covering your edge or covering your backside. Um, but he will definitely stretch the field, right? Um, and then it it he's, it it, it, he's it gives more us more of your Aaron Aaron Hernandez type of thing. Right, right. And he gives you a better and overall this this entire free agency gives you the flexibility in the draft to do a lot of things to trade out. To you know, to pick the best player that you see that is there um, earlier in the draft, and then maybe trade out of the later later picks to get more picks mm-hmm. to address more needs. I mean, we still need to me. We still need an edge rusher, which again, I sure. feel like that's what's going to happen in the beginning of the draft. We yeah. still could use another offensive lineman. You know, I I, I dare to uh, say who we're going to talk about. How are you going to start this off with Brandon coming but up? Brandon next. is coming up next, so I let let him address <laughs> that. Um, no, wait, wait, wait. He said he didn't. He didn't want to talk about the draft. Right, but so, he he so. will. He will. <laughs> but you know, we still let, let's hold him to that. Let's right? hold him to it. Right. Can, can, can I, can we I, can still could use the safety. Right. But I, but I but I, what I feel is going to be the sleeper is the defensive lineman in this draft in the first or early second round. Once Terry mm-hmm. makes his point, I'm going to go to Kyle. Then Kyle, I'm going to come to me because I haven't spoken yet about my uh, free agent thoughts. Good. So, so. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. I'm just going. I'm just going to throw this in there that uh, I don't think anybody wants, except maybe Kerry, um, is even wants to consider Kyle Hamilton at four. Um, I I don't. I do not. Okay. No, wait, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. I so, mean, no, let's, I, I I will consider it. I'm not oh, going to not consider it, but that wouldn't be my first option. So, so what I'm saying here is part part of my my reason and maybe Kerry's reason for the honey badger fascination here is that that stops us from 
making that type of <laughs> no mistake. that's not why um, i'm saying it <laughs> all, right, all right well well i'm just gonna throw this out there before brandon goes that if you if you comp quandre Diggs, also 29 years old and and Tyrion matthew um at, at 29 years old as well uh dig signed for three years 40 million dollars okay and he's the 16th ranked uh free agent on the cbs board and uh the honey badger's 20. so let's say that you could get um the honey badger for somewhere between nine and ten million dollars a year um are we all on board with that if that you know you're talking about spending money i don't think that's a lot of money to spend I'm on board with that, um, but I, I think because of the Honey Badger's name, I'm not talking about the Honey Badger, I'm just talking about his rep, his reputation, um, and what he also brings to the team that uh, Diggs wouldn't necessarily bring that 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 sure. personality, you know, that um, that Swagger. basically he, he would give you like more of an identity because before he went to uh, Kansas City, they were known as just Swiss cheese. Now, when he got there, they got a little bit better, they were still, you know, not the greatest defense, but he gave them an identity. And if you look at some of the clips of him just talking garbage to, like, Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, he was never giving up, never mm-hmm. giving up. And he would – that attitude right there would just, uh, you know, permeate through the team and give us an identity. So, you know, I wouldn't say that he would get a little bit less. I think he'd probably get a little bit more of what you just quoted, maybe at 11 a year, and I would well, still do that. That him. extra, that extra million, that extra million might be the freight charge of coming to the Jets, like we were talking about with the Jets and the Jaguars. Right. Like, yeah, he might sign for ten million with Kansas City and stay there because right. Kansas City. But yeah. but Kansas we got to remember that the, the AFC West has now become a minefield of talent. So yeah. it's not like because you're on the Kansas City Chiefs, you're going to the Super. Bowl. Okay, KC already signed a safety. So he doesn't even have an option to go back there. Okay, so then, oh, who did they sign? I I forgot the guy's name, but um, I, I'll look it up. But they they definitely signed somebody, so he doesn't even okay. have an option to go back there. Yeah, well, but he can I, still go somewhere more attractive. It's not like sure. the Jets are attractive, you know what I mean? You know, but um, says who? Going, just going to uh, <laughs> the Jaguars as far as what Kyle was saying, um, and then I'll get into my free agency, uh. The Jaguars, I think, are going about free agency the wrong way. You know who got sacked a whole bunch? Trevor Lawrence got sacked a whole bunch. They need to address their O-line more than what they're doing right now. They're getting specialty players and guys that kind well, of look good. Didn't they sign an they, offensive lineman? They, 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 yeah, signed, sure. they signed Brandon Scherf. Sure. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Right. And, right. And, and, and what that leads sure. me to believe is that they're going to they're gonna, um, draft with their first pick. But you know what? But you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But here's the thing: it's only Sheriff, and then they re-signed. I think one or two of some of their already existing O-linemen, which is not good enough because those guys were just not good at all. So I think they need to do a little bit more. But anyway, you know, um, as far as free agency for the Jets, um, I commend them. You know, I, 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 I think they did a a, a good job. Um, I love the Lake and Tomlinson pick. You know, uh, not only. Is, not only is he good, um, or really good, he also fits the system that we ha- that that we have here. You know, sure. Um, so he's coming back to um, a familiar system with familiar coaches, um, the zone blocking type of scheme. Um, he's an athletic uh, uh, offensive guard, so don't be surprised to see us running more screens and 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 um, you know uh, run plays that. Uh, you know, encompass uh, pulls and traps and things like that where the offensive line is moving. So that's a good thing. And he's an excellent pass blocker as well. And he really solidifies that right guard position. And I've been saying this all, you know, all year as far as last year's football um, in 2021, that season, the middle of our line was just absolutely terrible in in pass blocking until it's kind of started getting together um, like the last third of the season. And that's kind of still why I still want to get rid of McGovern. I, I don't believe in him. Um, I, I, I don't look at him as, as a tough guy in the middle. Wait, I you didn't you didn't send him a Christmas card? Nah. You know, <laughs> I don't hate the dude. He's Kwanzaa? all right. In, in <laughs> it, but 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 to your point, to your point, and I and I do echo your point, it wasn't until the last third of the season that they started to gel. But you have to the other impactful um, thing that happened was that they, they signed Duvernay. 
Yeah. Right. Tardy. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you have to factor that in. And then they started playing a lot better. Yeah. So. So basically. So basically what, what you're saying, Kerry, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. McGovern didn't really make anyone better. We had to get a better player to actually have him <laughs> play better. I, 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 no, I that's think not that what I'm saying. Did. What I'm saying yeah. is. That's what I'm um, saying. That, uh, you might be saying <laughs> that, but that's that's wrong. What I'm telling you is that <laughs> he was still a top third uh, center in the in in this league. What I'm telling you is that the the guy that he replaced, Tardif replaced, was um, Van Rotten. The no, no, third. no. He was he was absolutely rotten. Is that is that really? Excuse his me, name? Van yeah. Rotten. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Van Roten. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what that was the missing link. That, that was the uh, the weak link. Yes, his first name is absolutely. No, no, no. Hold on. I, I wasn't saying Van Tardy or whatever his name is Van was Tardy. the weak link. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just two players in one. There you go. Sounds like Van Cleef, right? Van Cleef. You know, um, Lee Van Cleef. No, I, I was I was saying that McGovern, you know, uh, got better as a result of getting a better guard. So I was saying McGovern wasn't making anyone better. He needed the assistance of a better guard to make him better. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I still I still think that that sucks. Right. Just, the way I think you're, you're saying it's it all twisted right. up. Right. Um, the, <laughs> right. the, the, the bottom yeah, line is, I mean, listen, if, if you're a center and your guard suck, you're not going to be that great. No, because you have, right. You got to rely you're, on them, right? I mean, if there's a twist coming through the middle, I mean, I'm not an offensive lineman, never have Brian, been, but so, you know so, what so, it is. So, Kerry and Brian. So, yeah. Kerry and Brian. Yeah. So, then how come McGovern's play got better when we got a better guard in? Because he had a partner who could back him up, and when they were running stunts in the middle, you know, at, you know, your guy next to you, your neighbor, is helping yeah, you out. Yeah, right. If his, look, he look, my point is that if his, if, the, if your neighbor's he house is on fire, better. if your neighbor's house is on fire, to you're going to catch fire, too. Your house is going to catch fire, too. So he's trying right. to put out the fires on the right side right. and, you right. know, ignoring the house fire that's going on at his house. And he wasn't trying to help out the right side. He could barely hold his own, man. He's oh not that God. good of a center. Bro. And, I'm and, tell okay. you. He's not. All right. Okay. And, 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 and him on the goal line, just get beat. You know what I'm saying? On a run play. Just, you know, like a QB sneak, just getting pushed back and demolished and Zach Wilson getting tackled. And it makes the coaching staff look stupid because why the heck would they run that play? Okay. It's like it's like first and goal, you know, okay. believe in your old line. But, you know, now nah, we can't believe in them because the middle of the old line is Swiss cheese. McGovern stinks. Get him out of here. <laughs> See, th those, you are guys, you guys, you, those are strong words. Those are strong words. You guys are not, you guys are not, not going to convince. I got the videotape. Your government does not stink. <laughs> Bro, I've been watching this all season. I've been saying this all season. Go back in the text. You know that. You, but but yeah. my point is that the, the line started gelling when Tardif came. Right? Yes, that's, that's my point too, Kerry. That's my point too. Right, but when you... Government didn't you, make when anyone you, better. Right, when you strengthen a link, it makes the entire line play better. It just does. And this guy, well, you know this guy, what? and this guy. Before we, before we, they signed him as a free agent. We wanted him as a free agent. I mean, look, and, you know, and he so played, and he played to that level last year. The dude had a rookie on his left side, and yep. he had Van Rotten on his right side. And then you're expecting for him to be make everybody play better. Something. Make everybody better. I mean, come on, man. It's it, it, it's difficult. Any any score is seventy five point nine. We're not saying this about Nick Mangold. We're not saying this about Kevin Mawai. Okay, because they because, were just because Nick because so Nick Mango better. had Kevin Mawai. They were so much better. They were so much because better. Because Nick Mango had Kevin Mawai too. Secondly, hold on a second. You had Alan Fanica next to hold the two. Right. 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 Hold on a Hello. Come on. Hello. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So you're Not saying you're saying Nick Mango would have been the same with Van Roten to his right? Let me talk. Let me talk. Why? No, I'm not gonna let you talk. Yes. Let me talk. No. All right. So yes. Face is too big on the screen. Be quiet. Back, back up, up, back up. Back we, can't, up. we can't see the entire hold face. Hold on, hold on. George Fent, George Fent, mm -hmm. all righty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had an excellent year. He had a rookie play next to him. Okay. He made him play better. He made him play better, okay? He had a rookie next to him. He had the best season of his entire career. He allowed the rookie, even though, you know, he's, you know, from good stock, but, you know, he had his little mishaps, but he played well as a result. If George Fent did not play well, the rookie wouldn't have stand it. He wouldn't have stood a chance because he has a terrible center to his right. Well, not a terrible, but just not that well, great. You keep of a saying terrible. Right. No, he's not that great. I'm not saying he's great. I, I don't. I don't disagree with you in that. I'm not saying he's great. What I'm saying he is. He is. He plays at an acceptable level. No, I think okay. it's unacceptable. All right. All right. Okay. 
I'm going to give him a C minus when he should be playing at a B plus. C minus. He should be playing at a B plus. Wow, you're a tough grader. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's no grading on the curve in his class at all. You're a tough grader. Anyway, so moving on from that. No, no, no. no. no, I I haven't had my two cents uh, in this conversation. (laughs) Um, I'm not done yet. Oh, you guys talked about free agency. I'm not done yet. I am. I am. Uh, I, I am. I'm. I'm in uh, Team Kerry and Brian <laughs> on this, That's um, right. for sure. And uh, and, my own and, oh, and my I got. Gosh. I gotta. I gotta agree with the um, with the being tethered to a poor right guard and a rookie left guard. Um, he had a seventy five point nine PFF rate. Right. Oh my you, you, you know you're and and I'm looking up Fant right now. To see what what fans PFF grade because you love Fan, and so do I. He's he's, uh, he's a very good but, pass blocker, but in in, in 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 run blocking, he's not as good. But anyway, George Fan's PFF grade was seventy one. Right, there you go. And you know what? He's an athletic offensive tackle, which fits the scheme, which fits the zone blocking scheme, that San Francisco style scheme that we run here yeah. on the New York Jets. So I'm going to respectfully disagree with you okay. because I I feel like you decided. That you hate the governor, <laughs> right? And that, and, and, and that you, you're and you have to, and you have to defend your it. decision. That's what you it are, is. So, 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 so you are double and tripling down on the the on the, the, on the drowning ship that you saw that no, disgusted no. you. You so know what much. it is? I believe. First of all, I have my own eyes, and I can watch, and I can you know critique and and criticize and and evaluate players. You know what I'm saying? I know football just like you guys. I know it. All right. So I can look at alignment, you know, offensive or defensive, because that's what I played, and that's kind of like my specialty. I can tell <clears throat> what they're doing wrong versus what they're doing right. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? If PFF wanted to hire me, I guarantee you that I would be a valuable asset over there. <laughs> over How about there. That? Your grade would be a 57. Over there. But anyway, anyway. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I agree. You know what, Brian? Your grade would you know be what? in the red. Your grade yeah, would be right. in the red. Uh, but, right. but listen, so so just to the point, he was the top rated offensive lineman we had last year. He but sucked. Then, okay. Well, then if he sucks, then everybody sucks equally worse. Not <laughs> not Fant and not AVT. I see the potential in AVT. I mean, hey, we Fant had the yeah. best potential. his best season yet. Potential. And the coaching staff and the GM likes him a lot. Okay. And I'm hearing some behind the scenes stuff about how much they really like fans as well. Okay. Listen, I mean, listen, I'm I'm not I I I'm not related to McGovern in any sort of way, just so that we know um as to why that you know, I think that he's gotten um what we are saying here today. At the end of the day, I think that there are other things that we could do with our offensive line that don't start with the center. I think he's serviceable. I think we can, you know, win with him at our center position right now, especially how much we're, we're um, paying him. Now, can we upgrade? Certainly. We, I'm not saying he's we, not the top center can, in the league. We can cut, but, we can cut him and yeah. save about $9 million. And replace him with who? You know who he's going to stay. Yeah, and well, I, I, well, if well, he's we, there, he's there. But, I mean, you can't – first of all, you can't cut him until you, you have a replacement. In first of all, Kerry, you didn't know who I was going to say. <laughs> well, all the right? other guy is gone, so. Well, the, well I was going to say, well, because – because we didn't, you know, I was going to say the the center from uh, the Ravens who just now got signed by, uh, I forget who they got signed by, but uh, Bozeman was available. He just signed a one-year deal, you know, so he was available um, as of very recently. So now I think we're kind of stuck with uh, McGovern, which I'm not that happy about, stuck. you know. Oh and, and uh, but the good thing is that we've we're got. Stuck with a, with a top Lake five and, center. Lake and Tomlinson, and we have AVT who will, probably make McGovern better because McGovern doesn't make anyone else better. <laughs> oh I love when you show you your teeth. It. All right. Um, you got, yeah, you got the, <laughs> the, you got, you got the number, the number nine PFF center in the right. league at $10 million per. Okay. Um, Kyle, and, he was and, the number 11 two years ago when we first got him year before last and he was not good. So, so, so technically he's gotten better if he was 11 and now he's nine. Um, from what he was when we got him. Um, I I just, I think that 
if, when we got even him, if I agreed, even if I agreed, him, he was 11. I don't know what he scored in 2020. You can look that up. Six, and then 2021 in the 60s and, and, 60s and what? Pro in, PFF, 21? PFF. in 2020, 2020. He was in the 60s. Right. Yeah. Holy mackerel. And then now 2021, you're saying he's a nine, right? He's almost, he's almost 76 in PFF. So he's 15, 16 points higher. Um, but I'm just saying, let's say that I agreed with you. And that was after having a terrible let, let, first let, half let, of the year. Sure. Let's say I, I agreed with you and you cut McGovern and you save, um, you only have a $1.3 million dead money hit and you save $9 million. Okay. Then what you have to do is you have to spend the asset that you have at the top of the first 10 picks to pick this guy out of Iowa, who is a crap shoot because He's a draft pick, not because he's not going to be good. I think he's going to be great. Um, Tyler Lindenbaum is the guy that I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But now, but now you have to spend an asset because you didn't sign somebody in free agency. Um, there's nobody else to sign, and you have to go get your center via the draft. So now you're going to have a rookie center next to a second-year guard. And although you've upgraded at right guard, those three positions are still tethered together. Now, I, I, I feel like we both come from a pretty good place in evaluating O line, and I think when you talk about tackles, tackles work on an island. They 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 have to do a lot of stuff on their own, right or left. While the center and the two guards have a lot of stuff they have to work on together. So, I'd say even if I was totally in your camp on McGovern, I don't think it's worth it to necessarily jettison that top ten center in order to draft another guy to replace him that is an unknown quantity in the NFL. I understand that, Kyle, and I respect your point of view. My thing is that we should have, but not anymore. So Bradley Bozeman, first of all, he's the second center that I was looking at. Before that, it was Jensen. You know, we should have played a little harder to get Jensen, but okay, I get it. Three years, thirty-nine million, maybe that's too much. Yeah, because After then that, you would then Bradley, you then that puts you out of the out of the running for um for for Lincoln Tomlinson. And that's why I said, you know, maybe, maybe not. I, I, I've already conceded that maybe it was too much money. Fine. Three million, thirty nine million, uh, three years, thirty nine million. That's fine. I can accept that. Then after that, it was Bradley Bozeman, who just signed with the Carolina Panthers. Um, just a one year deal. I don't know what his numbers are, but he just signed a one year deal. I think Bradley Bozeman um, is, uh, you know, that's not official yet. What's not official? The, well, Bra the Bradley Bozeman, because it's not um, it says they it's agree not listed. To uh, I'm, I'm looking at it. It says they agreed to terms. Um, and he's settling for a one-year deal in Carolina. Um, and he's going to replace Matt Paradis, who was also a good center who I wanted a couple years back out of Denver. But anyway. Anyway, we're stuck on the center thing. I'm not even done yet. All right? <laughs> well, finish, man. You, I mean, we right? gave you well, plenty of time to talk. Oh, my gosh. The, the floor is yours. It takes so long. Yeah. So long. So long winded. Still talking, Gary, huh? Huh? Okay, there we go. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, and uh, you know, um, as far as free agency is concerned, as far as the defense, um, so far so good. Um, I like the 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 starting safety, uh, Whitehead that we got out of uh, Tampa. Um. Uh, looking into uh, Reed, the slot cornerback, or, or the cornerback that that we got um, after being briefed by Brian and um, and Kerry, and then looking into it on my own as well. I'm very happy with that signing as well, and the price that we paid for uh, both of those guys. So I, I feel like we still have more wiggle room in our cap as a result of the uh, smart and um, economical signings by um, Joe Douglas. And, um, you know, uh, I just think that the uh, we're in a good position. I would have liked to have gotten um, a wide receiver in free agency, but we'll see what else we have in store. You know, so uh, we'll see what's up with that. Um, so, yeah, it was long-winded, but uh, let's move on. Only long-winded by you guys because I barely got to speak. But uh, before, yeah, before you, you go, let me just let me, let me throw out one more number <laughs> yeah, <right>. for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> one, one more number that, uh, that tells you about – JD a little bit um, with Bryce. If Bryce Hall and DJ Reed are starting corners next year, which is not very bad at all, um, we're talking about like 
11 million dollars total for our two starting corners because yeah. Br- Bryce Hall is set to make under a million dollars on his rookie deal um this year now they might want to extend him and uh and keep him in green for a little while based on those numbers and based on his trend but um that's that's pretty good and our 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 other starting guy from uh last year uh Brandon Eccles uh I believe makes even less than that um and I like him a lot yeah, Brandon, like Eccles, that Brandon Eccles is making eight hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars yeah, and so, th- three quick notes if you were done, Kyle, with what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I'm done. So, so Christian Kirk does not, to this point, have a 1,000-yard receiving season, no. <laughs> although he got $82 million. Uh, Allen uh, Robinson? What about Allen Robinson? Well, yeah, I wasn't even going to speak to that okay. per se, but um, the Honey Badger re- was replaced by DJ Reed. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not, not, not the right guy. Uh, I thought DJ Reed was who we found. Mm, Justin Reed, sorry. It was a different Reed. Yeah. Uh, by Justin Reed. And his brother, I think. Okay. All right. So I was close. And uh, Corey Davis is not a number one wide receiver. Okay. Next up. Yeah, whatever. Oh. Moving on. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. snaps. Well, if Corey Davis is not, is not a number one wide receiver, when, then. When we get to talking about that, me and Kyle will, 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 will surely cut you off a whole lot. So uh, sure. we'll, oh, wow. we'll set Do you it. up to get cut off. There we go. That at all. <laughs> all, right. all right, so fellas, so fellas, let's move on. Um, our next point here. Um, at this point in free agency, what do we need to address? I'm sorry. In this point, um, what do we need to address now in the draft? So, we've had you know free agency. It's still ongoing, but uh, we really hit our marks on what we really tried to get. And then now, as you look forward to the draft, and considering the position that we are in with our acquisitions. Um, and our team as it is now, what do we need to address in the draft? We've got pick number four, number 10, number 35, and number 38. Um, that's our first two rounds. And then we have pick number 69 in the uh, in the third round. So uh, where do you guys go from here? Kerry, why don't you lead it off? So as, as I said, I think uh, the, the positions that we are in significant need of well, hold on, Kerry. I don't like what you're saying here. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. Yeah, boy. Our, <laughs> our edge. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. A D G E spelled edge. Um, <laughs> Funny. Wide receiver and defensive line. And um, as we all know, you know, a left tackle. For all you edge, folks at home. I'm sorry, Kerry. For all you folks at home, we haven't, you know, aired in a while. So we're using this time to take subtle and overt digs at one another throughout the whole podcast. And I love it. It's family. We all love each other. We're right. bald and brewing family. That's but right. you know what? As guys are, the more you like someone, the more you make fun of them. So it's like, you know, oh, is they that love how it is. Sidebar. Sidebar. Uh, Brandon does a lot of uh, voice texting. And um, the the words that come out are sometimes not what he meant to say, and he was trying to say pass rush pass rusher, and it came out as pass Russian on the thing. And I'm looking at something like, pass Russian. What is he talking about? And then I realized that it was voice text. So now we have we have Edge spelled wrong, Edgar, and we have um, pass Russian. But I think Edgar was uh, Perry, not Brandon. No, if I remember it was, correctly. It was, it was me, and then Brandon just copied my entire draft. <laughs> <laughs> Along with E-D-G-E. <laughs> Along with the wrong spelling. Of right. It. Yeah, right. and then Kerry tried to get French on us and called Donald Darno. Darno. <laughs> well, it is Darno. That's, that's, the, that's the etymology. All right. <laughs> so, I just have to let our audience kind of know, like, where we're coming from as far as all the banter back and forth. It's all love, though. Right, but as I was saying, um, you know, we definitely have to address edge first, and uh, you know, first or second, re- whether it's the fourth pick or we trade down out of the tenth pick and and we gain more picks, I think that's where ha- we have to go. And again, we need another receiver. I think we have a one B. Right? Negative. But I think <laughs> yeah. we need another receiver, and my another receiver is Traylon Burks. 
who I want out of Arkansas. 6'3", 225, uh, possession, Debo, Samuels type guy. Um, after he's, a, he's a run after the catch type of receiver, and um, that would definitely balance out the receiving core that we have. Um, and then I think after that, it's, you know, my sleeper is, is picking up uh, a impact player on the interior of the uh, defensive line to help Quentin Williams out. Well, th well said, well said. I mean, um, what do you guys think about uh, Drake London? I mean, nope. I hear what you're saying. I hear you're saying what, what you're saying about the receiver from Arkansas, and um, I like that guy a lot. But I'm looking at uh, Drake London as almost like a Mike Evans kind of a guy as well, you know. Um, and uh, if you look at our receiving core, there's really no one there that's there right now that actually plays that's above six foot one, except for Mims. And we don't know what his status is going to be coming in, you know. How tall is Davis? Him a chance. But Davis was six four. Right. Yeah. Davis is tall. Corey Davis is not six four. He's six three. He's six, At least three. He's, he's, he's six three. Yeah. yeah. He's a big receiver. Want, let's look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah, you look it up since you were wrong. Right. You might as well look you it up. You might as well look it up. To I, I might correct be. yourself. Hey, I might yeah. be. Um. So, so listen, I I like I like Drake London. Um. I'm not high on any one particular person as far as wide receiver in this draft. Uh, I like Traylon Burks. I think he's he's different from anybody else we have in our wide receiving core currently. I think Drake London would be different from anybody we have in our wide receiving core right now. Um, I'm wrong. He's 6'3". I'm wrong. We knew that already, so that's why we moved on. No, you didn't have to interrupt um, us to say anyway, that. Anyway, so, um, so, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm with you, but I, I just – I don't want to um, – I don't know if I'm picking anybody at 10. I mean, if I'm moving down potentially, right. then I'm picking somebody up. Uh, I, I just don't know if I'm using the number 10 pick in order to draft a wide no, receiver if we not. stay there. Absolutely right? not. Absolutely yeah, not. I mean, and, and if we're – if I'm picking up where, where you left off, I mean, edge. I would like to draft two edge rushers in the first two rounds, to be honest with you, because um, I think there's a couple. The guy from Penn State I like in the second round. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, you know – mispronouncing his last name but i think he's definitely somebody that i would uh, take a look at thibodeau at number four somebody i would definitely take a look at uh as well we definitely need another wide receiver so i would say that maybe in our our first uh pick in the second round um i can still go trey bride mcbride to be honest with you um tight end as well and just totally flood that tight end room what are you going to do if you have all three of them on the field at once i mean Good luck uh, from that perspective as well. So, you know, for me, I, I think uh, linebacker is definitely a, a, a need that we have. Edge is definitely a need that we have. D tackle, I just, you can't do it all in the first four picks. So, no, you can't. I, I, I would say, you know, um, you know, I know you guys think I'm going to go Linderbaum here, but since we're keeping uh, McGovern, I'm not going to go Linderbaum. So, Let's just say there is an edge between uh, Hutchinson and uh, Thibodeau that's there at four, of course, without saying I'm grabbing him. And um, I'm grabbing Hutch before Linda Ball, um, before Thibodeau. Um, but if Thibodeau is there and, and Hutch isn't, I'm not hesitating. I'm grabbing him. So, and then if we go down to uh, the 10th pick and I've decided, you know, we decided, all right, you know, it's not necessary to get, um, to get the kid from Iowa. I'm looking at Sauce Gardner, man. I'm looking at Sauce out of Cincinnati. You know, um, he's probably the highest rated cornerback um, in the entire draft. Sure. And, uh, you know, he's got Moxie. He ha he didn't let up a touchdown. I don't think he let up a touchdown in his, in his entire Cincinnati career. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know he didn't do it his last year there. Sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, and, and then you combine that with his numbers from the uh, combine. Um, the kid looks like the truth. So, um I would do that. And then going down to the uh, 35th pick, um, I know Trayvon Burks, his, uh, his, his stock has dropped a little bit as a result of the combine. And if he's still there, I'm scooping him up quick at 35. Super, super quick. There were reports that the that Jets really loved that, that dude too. You know, um, love Burks and stuff, uh, spent yeah. some time with him. And so, I, listen, if he's available at the top of the second, or maybe you – spend some draft capital in order to move back into the first round. Uh, yeah. Maybe I do that in order to scoop him up a little bit later. But I'm with you. I let Sauce Gardner to a 10. I mean, if yeah. we're if we, we're, we're, we are stuck at 10, we can't move back, I mean, the 
top cornerback potentially on the draft board. Oh, Can't yeah. do. I mean, and and that's what you need, right? We have a lot of we have a lot of cornerbacks in the yeah. AFC, man. We got to be able to lock some people down, and we have to be able to get at the quarterback. And you know, if we're it's able to, league. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you got so you got Tibbs yeah. and you got Gardner. We walk away with those two people in the first round. I'm gonna be a happy dude. I can't oh, see yeah. I can't see Gardner going after ten. Before ten, I, should, I can't I can't see him lasting till ten. Lasting is that what you're saying? 10. I don't see it. You know, uh, but if well, he's there, if he's there, you have to scoop him up. It doesn't. It, it you know, I positional just, value. Yeah. what he's been able to right, do. Sure. Um, size. Sure. I mean, he 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 could play in either a uh, man or zone. Um. Physical guy. I mean, I I, w- I would definitely scoop him up at ten if he's there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you guys. Um, I'm not gonna be disappointed necessarily if we would pick a soft gardener at ten. But the way that I'm looking at this is, I agree with Brandon wholeheartedly at four. I like Hutch better than Thibodeau. Sure, um, definitely. Um, I think we all and do. Uh, and and like Hutch is is the number one player on Daniel Jeremiah's board, I believe, um, in the whole draft. Um, but either way, I go with one of those two people. You get a cheap, potentially elite edge rusher to go along with Carl Lawson, Jonathan Franklin Myers, and Bryce Huff. You know, if those are your four guys that you're really going to go at it with. But then at 10, and I agree with Brian that I get out of 10 and I, 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 I get more draft picks if possible because um, with the needs that we have, um, it's we're, it's a weird situation with corner and wide receiver as far as I see it that um, there's a huge drop off after that that like 10 to 20 position so if, if you're if you're waiting to 35 to pick again you're not going to get the wide receiver or the corner that you need right um, at value um, you might get something that's a little bit less so when I look at our needs, I think we have a bigger need at wide receiver than we do at corner with the signing of DJ Reed, because like we just said, we have a starter in Bryce Hall, who I think is trending up. DJ Reed, unless you're going to bump him out to be the slot corner, um, the nickel guy, um, if you bring in a soft gardener or something like that, then almost, you're almost saying you're going to pay your, your slot corner more money than your two starting corners, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense monetarily. Um, and if you're going to get a Traylon Burks, if you're going to get a uh, Garrett Smith or um, Drake London, you're going to have to get them at 10 to 15. Yeah. So and now, I don't, um, I don't that, think that, that's I don't, my logic. Well, I don't, I don't think you have to, I don't think at 10, Traylon Burks is somebody that you pick up at 10. I think you pick him up at the later half of the first round or the earlier part of the second round. I think that's yeah, what like, I think that's what it like is. Like I prefaced before, his stock kind of dropped, but we can probably get a gem if we were to wait on him. But the other two receivers that Kyle mentioned, I do agree, between the 10 and 15 uh, pick area, those guys will probably be prime targets for other teams. You know, so um, if you wanted to pick one of those guys, then you'd have to, you know, pick him at 10. That's what we have. Mark my words, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, Every pick between ten and fifteen, with the exception of maybe a Lindenbaum, is either a wide receiver or a corner. Ten to well, fifteen. Well, depends also who's picking uh, as well. So let's see who's picking. And between ten and fifteen, we have us at ten, Washington at eleven, um, the Vikings at twelve. They're not going to pick a receiver. No. Uh, the, Are they going to? They're, they're going to have to pick a corner though. Yeah. Gonna have to pick a corner. The Titans at thirteen, uh, Baltimore at fourteen, and the Eagles at fifteen and sixteen, right after them. So yeah, uh, I, I, oh, I, I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm going a little too hard on every pick is going to be one of those. But <laughs> uh, you, you know, no, 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 we're going to hold you to it. <laughs> okay, but, but but I I think I think you guys know what I'm saying though. It's I know you like, do. We definitely do. Yeah. I, and 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 look. I feel the same way that I did about ABT last year. If, if I that's, said, if that's your guy, him. go get him. If Traylon, if Traylon Burks is your guy, go get him. You know. Yeah, but you don't go get him at you. You don't. You don't sit there and try to take him at ten. Yeah. 
you you trade back out of ten or out of four. And I have a, actually I got a better question for you. Say both Thibodeau and Hutchinson are picked prior to you picking at four. What do you do? I'm open to trading down, but it depends on how far. Trading we're down out of four. Or trading trade down, down out of ten. I, I would trade down out of either one if Hutch, Thibodeau, um, and Sauce Gardner are not there. Yeah, for me, I I, I could trade back. I'm not going to go too far back from four. That's what. That's exactly so, what I'm. Saying. So yeah, I, I'm five, maybe six. That's so about you, it. So you're I saying mean, you're saying trade with the Giants? I would trade with the Giants. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If they if they want if Iquano is sitting there. And they want them, and I'm at four and they're at five, and I'm getting other phone calls. Then I, I I'm gonna weigh what they're talking about to move up the one pick. Sure. So yeah. And and, and just like in our text, I really like this kid. Um, I, I had to show your, his face. <laughs> while while Brandon's talking, I got to show Kerry's face because you can't see it. He's like, well, what do I? I don't I don't want to give the Giants anything. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't want to help them out. And 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 not on, not only that. Uh, but here, here's a scenario. Say Aquano okay. is ready at four. You you have issues with Beckton right now, uh-huh. right? You don't know what's what's happening with him. You only have Fant for one more year, really. I thought they were working on a an extension. Again, the, where I'm just saying it from right yet, now. Though. I'm just saying yeah. from right now. You only have Fant for one more year. Do you, you know? Do you pick up Aquano at four and make them fight out, fight it out for I'm two not- positions? I'm not opposed to that at all, Kerry. I'm not opposed to that at all. I do Iquano, know to me, they... is could be picked number one. He's that kind of kid. Here, yeah. here, here's, here's your problem. <laughs> here's your problem. This is this is the OB top in effect. Fight it out. This is the, this is the OB top in effect, right? And, and, before, so, and before you say that, ahead, again, I want to remind you about what I have said from the beginning. The offensive line depth is probably the most underrated um, um, contributor to success to a lot of these teams in the NFL that you can just slide in a guy who um, because you because the offensive line health is always a question mark for every team every year right to have a, to have an off a, a starting offensive tackle to go right in when Beckton gets hurt on a regular basis when even when he's even when he's playing well Beckton gets hurt on a regular basis um, Fant who has had his periods of being on the on the you know, DL or, or being out. If you could just slot somebody else in, you know. I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going, if they end up going that route, I'm not going to be mad per se. What's going to anger <laughs> us is that <laughs> Beckton comes back like a freaking grizzly bear. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> then Iquano looks ridiculous. And then Fant is like, yo, I'm the starter. All right, you know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? And so Aquano offers you, also offers you, he can play guard as well. But we, just, a but we just signed a guard. I, I know, and I reckon, just, and we, we have, right, right, guard. right, right. But I'm saying, again, it's, 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 a, it's about, to me, it's about, you know, how you're going to play week to week when you have starters that are going to, who is our backup tackle? McDermott? Yeah, McDermott I, and the and other kids. Dude, the, the dude, African dude. Which, which you're not going to tell me right now. So we're going to draft at I'm number just, four. I'm just saying. Back I'm just tackle. saying. I'm just, that's no, not, no. That's not no, what no, you're going to no. tell me. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just putting huh? it out there just so that you know. Yeah, and, and I'm saying no way. Like this this dude at number four has to be an all-pro guy who's starting from the giddy-up from yep. day one. Right in mini It's gonna piss me off if the Giants if, pick uh, him up it, yeah, and, and they it, and they and they beast with this guy. I'm, if I'm, there is, if I, there is, if there is no pass rusher, if there if there is no Hutchinson and no Thibodeau at four, get out of that spot. Like, do what you got to do to get out of that. Spot. You don't pick Walker. I agree. You don't I pick agree. Walker with, from Georgia. I I agree with Brian that you no. don't you don't you don't you don't reach on a on a on a pick four. Um, for a pass rusher, and you don't draft your backup tackle. Yeah, like if I if I draft him, I'm playing him, you know. And yeah. then I mean, it'll, at, it'll that, be at, at that point, Kyle Hamilton looks really good to me. Sure. At four? No, no, no. I I, I we did the Giants because everybody's calling me. So even if it, if it's Evan Neal or it's Aquanu, 
the my phone is ringing off the hook, right? Right. It is. It's ringing yeah. off the hook. So yeah. I say, hmm, New York Giants. You want them? Because these guys want this guy, right? So what? What do you want, right? I I want I want five and seven. Well, you know what I mean. I, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting both. Okay, so right, so right, I, right. I want five. You're getting your second, second round. round You're getting so, that second so round. Pick. Yeah. I want five, and I want your second round pick, right? And we can talk about maybe 2023 20, something. But I, but for right now, we're just gonna talk about that, right? Okay. And, right. and it's that so we drop down, we pick our our safety, and then we have another second round pick. We have three second round picks at the top of the right. second round. And then you feel really then you good use about one, Then you use that second round pick to trade back into the first round and get Traylon Burke. Boom. Whatever. There right? you go. Whatever. I'm done. <laughs> right? He's when is this over? This Burke. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. It's my guy right by there. By the way, by the way, at pick number 38, let's get that kid Chad Muma out of Wyoming. No, you I'm kid? Brandon. Brandon, look at my face. I am. I can't see it. I'm. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, brother. Get <laughs> closer <laughs> to the screen, like as you weren't close enough. I'm with I you. Can't, I can't see your face. <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> if I'm trading with if I'm trading with the Giants, I might want them to throw Graham Gano in the trade. Give us a kicker that we can uh, potentially start. No, nah, than... our kicker. Our kicker. He he, he did okay. Yeah. You know what's his name? Pineda or something like that? Pinata? I don't even Pinero. know his name. That's the point. No, nah, it starts with a P. Yeah, Pinero. I think. Yeah, Pinero. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> y'all are stupid. Um, <laughs> Takes one to know one. I'm looking. I'm looking at the at, at the Giants roster right now, and like, there's almost nobody that I would ask them to give us. Nah. They, they, uh, they, you know who who's either who's either salary is too high, <laughs> or. Um, I don't want, uh, and it, it, and it's crazy. It's crazy how bad their roster is right now. What about Saquon? Ooh. Well, I mean, Saquon's Saquon is like uh, Beckman. Is he going to be on the field? It's the money. I'm I'm not taking Saquon because of the money. He's not worth what, what it is. Saquon's only making seven million dollars a year. And I feel like Saquon this year he's money. making only seven. That's his cap hit. I feel like Saquon, when he was out the whole year with the uh, ACL, he still played more games than Beck. Kenny Galladay making $22 million a year. Wow. And he, he didn't have a touchdown the entire season. And that's $23.6 million in dead money. And who wanted, who wanted Galladay last year? I did. Yeah, shut up. Maybe I, maybe I was there. Yeah. yeah yep. raise, raise your hand. Yeah. Mm, mm. Okay, Herndon. We appreciate you. Right. Oh, wow. that that's another i mean you look at some of these wow. memes that are coming out with with uh joe douglas like uh we traded we traded herndon for the vikings and then signed their starting <laughs> <owner. laughs> right. we traded we traded darnold to uh to carolina and carolina is looking for someone to take darnold All right and they were trying to get deshaun watson when um, we traded when we traded Adams to Seattle because he wanted to be a part of a winning program and they're rebuilding. <laughs> oh, they're they're worse than the Jets. They're yeah. worse than the Jets. Right. And uh, you know, and and that's not just me being a, a fan. And everybody knows I live in Seattle, so I have to deal with that. This is, it feels like when I lived in Boston and I had to deal with being a Jet fan there. But the reality of it is, is that uh, we got all of Seattle's gold and uh, and they got our cast off. Well, the they difference between lead. being a Jets fan in Boston versus Seattle is probably you probably got into at least one fight in Boston. Probably not going to fight anyone in Seattle. The year they're more passive aggressive here. Um, the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 years that I was in Boston were probably some of the worst years for both the Patriots and the Jets. Uh, we're talking like 1992 to 1996. Ah, so you got uh, out of there just in time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was right. before the NFL Sunday ticket, too. I had to go to a place called the Sports Depot that had, like, 10,000 satellite dishes on the top of its roof. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, all right, let, let's move on. Um, so we're talking, uh, you know, free agency. But more specifically, let's talk about our favorite acquisition versus our biggest disappointment in this uh, free agency thus far because it's not over yet. 
but you know, we've come a, a good way to kind of uh, assess things. And for me, um, my favorite my, my favorite acquisition is definitely Lakin Thomason, the rude boy from Jamaica, eating curry goat and uh, oxtail <laughs> rice and peas, plenty gravy from the rice and peas and everything like that. Mary <laughs> Mase, yeah man. Him walk good and eat good and play good. Yeah man. Everything Irish. Yes, sir. Yeah. I Lincoln. heard that I heard that Lincoln Tomlinson was uh born in the US but conceived in Jamaica. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where have I heard that before? <laughs> you heard that on radio and on TV. Oh, yeah, that's right. And on the podcast, maybe. And I had a cut. And I had a what? What is it? A a a a a, a, con, a, a conception song too called "Kill Me Softly" by Rebecca. Oh. Yeah. That's way more information. Conception than me. song. TMI. <laughs> it's all I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, that's that's my. Uh, um, favorite acquisition and i think my biggest disappointment and you guys know through our group chat i really 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 wanted uh, uh chandler jones really bad i was just looking at the defensive line like the way that it would be lined up you know from left to right it would be chandler and then we have uh we can move in on say pass rushing downs and have uh uh, uh franklin myers and then at the three technique you have uh q williams um, and then uh, we have Carl Lawson. Imagine those guys rushing the passer on third down, third and long, second and long, or even just on on like run plays because uh, Josh Franklin Myers, um, uh, John Franklin Myers, he he plays inside and outside as well. Yeah. So, you know, he he's pretty versatile. And I was just looking at that D line. If we were to have like a, a channel, I was like, oh my goodness, hold on a second. If we had this, we'd be borderline great, kind of like that San Francisco defensive line that Salah was the de- uh, defensive coordinator for that was just wreaking havoc with uh, with like Bosa and um, I forget the other, the, the, the other guy's name, um, but another pro bowler, and it was just ridiculous. So I was a little bit disappointed, more than a little bit disappointed. I was highly disappointed, and I know the Jets had a lot of interest in him and were really pushing hard. And I also hear that uh, Chandler Jones really liked New York and was definitely considering New, uh, New York. But, hey, listen, you know, money talks. Everything else walks. So, you know, get your paper. It's football. So do your thing. But, uh, you know, definitely disappointed in that. Uh, we ended up uh, getting an outside linebacker from, I believe, what is he? Where is he from? Houston? Texas. From, the, uh, from Houston, right? Texas. Jacob uh, Martin. Yeah, from Texas. He's a rotational so, piece. Yeah, rotational piece. He's young. He's 26. Um, and, and we'll see what we can get. Um, uh, his brother, his brother used to play for the Jets, Josh Moore. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so we'll see. So that you know, my favorite and my most disappointing. I just threw it out there for 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 you guys to kind of consume. Kyle, why don't you take yours? Yeah, I'll go next because it's easy. I, I I'm I'm exactly the same as you. Uh, I like the Tomlinson uh, the best, and uh, I think it's a really quality signing. Uh, I'm disappointed in the Chandler Jones, but there really isn't that much to be disappointed about. Um, I mean, it's very shrewd. It's very, it, it puts us in a very good position going forward to even like pick up some scraps at the end of free agency, as well as um, jump in on some of those June one cuts um, that might be coming um, and also set us up well for the draft. Um, I saw something today that um, we are now down to four players total from Mike McCagnan's time on uh, the Jets, which is only like two years ago, uh, three years ago. Um, or, or is it, this is year three of- uh, This of, is year three. Of, of Joe Douglas. Douglas. So, yes. so when, when, you, when you look at that, and, and, and those guys are, uh, are, are not significant, like Chuma Goda, uh, oh, I, I had tried to memorize them before we came on, but there's only four. And uh, so, so Joe Douglas has completely redesigned this roster in the image that he wants it to be. It's not quite there yet, but he's he's there and, and he's aligned with the coaches. Um, so there's not much to be disappointed about here. Um, one of the things I laughed at is the one of the free agents out there is Anthony Barr. Um, oh, yeah, I, I yeah. looked at it too, Kyle. Yeah. yeah. So so I was I was hoping that. Joe Douglas would call up Anthony Barr, offer him a contract, and then rip it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and I, you know, so he could go play USFL for the Birmingham uh, League team. Um, still, 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 real, real uh, mad about Anthony Barr two years later, three years later. I can't tell. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's not there's not much to be disappointed in. Um, I would have been disappointed if we didn't re-sign Braxton Berrios because uh, I think it's good for the locker room and it's good for the offense. So, um, and I do, I, and as you guys know, I've always been a Braxton Berrios fan. I feel like New England didn't want to cut him. And and that says a lot because he's in that mold of that slot receiver that New England's tried to develop year after year. So I think it's good that we resigned him at the price that we did and uh, pretty happy about it. He's kind of like um, our version of Danny Whitehead when we let him go and New England picked him up. Yep. That's a, that's exactly uh, that's exactly what I said. And I messed up his name just like you did. I called him Whitehead. His name's Woodhead. Oh, Woodhead. Uh, but uh, but I was talking to my friend Glenn the other day, and I called him Whitehead too. Funny. And well, and and you're absolutely right. That's like Rex Ryan did not want to cut Danny Woodhead because yeah. he knew he knew what he would bring to the table. But um, that's the way the league is. You know, you have to make tough decisions sometimes. And uh, Barrios is definitely he's 26. He was a Pro Bowler last year as a returner. He's a good piece to have. And he's good for the team. So, um, I'm pro, kind of, he was an all pro too. First team all pro. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of surprised that uh, the Browns, um, you know, their their whole situation, they're, they're not going to get Deshaun Watson playing uh, probably until like the second half of the season next year with suspensions and everything like that. So, you look at like some of the things that other teams, it was a much more active free agency time with trades and, and things like that too this year than than you're expecting you know like it, it seemed like blockbuster news with Devontae adams and, and all that stuff was coming you know you know one after another so yeah the jets were low-key but they were low-key in a good way that helps build this program and progress it that's totally fine with me uh terry why don't you go ahead man so i i look at it from a positional standpoint and um and look, to, let's keep it real. If our quarterback doesn't play well, then it doesn't matter. All these free agency signings are not going to matter, right? So um, the tight end position, we needed to significantly upgrade that room. And with these two uh, tight ends that we signed that are, um, you know, sort of complementary tight ends, um, they fill several types of needs from the position. Um, with two guys, I think that's my uh, that's what I'm highest on. I think my undercover signing um, that will be impactful is the re-signing of Lamarcus Joyner at safety, who we didn't have for all of the entire last year. last year. They were very high on him, um, and I, and and bringing in, um, uh, you know, Jordan Whitehead. Uh, and maybe drafting another uh, safety um, that will definitely improve the safety room. Um, I like that safety out of Penn State, Brisker. He might be yeah, available. Yeah, he's, he's somebody that I do like as well. Um, but the position that I think we is is going to be a difficult one to um, figure out is going to be the interior defensive line. You know, do you bring in another guy? Do you Draft a guy. We need a space eater. And I don't mean space heater. I'm space eater. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I'm somebody, a little chilly. I need a space right, heater. I need too. a space heater. Right. Somebody that is going to hold the position, take up blocks, and, um, you know, so that whoever we get at, at middle linebacker uh, or at, uh, um, you know, can make those tackles. Right, instead of shooting gaps uh, and blowing up everybody else's assignment. Um, and you, you, we know who I'm talking about as far as that's yep. concerned. Kerry, can I ask you a follow-up question to what you just said? Sure. So would you agree that if your scouting department is on point and the Jets staff was the, one of the coaches of the senior ball, so they got to see everybody up close that is not – that is a, you know, a pick – around three through eight, uh, 12 mm -hmm. type person. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you don't don't would you agree that that defensive line is where if you scout well you can find that dude absolutely, um, absolutely. elsewhere mm-hmm. so with that said i think that we, we we should be pretty confident with our front office's ability to find somebody without spending a whole lot of capital um and that guy isn't nate shepherd um obviously no um you know, but, but 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 you have to have those rotational pieces, and re-signing him, I think, is is what he is. Yeah, and Fo- like Foley wasn't a guy that we spent you know high draft choice on. I I don't no. even know he he might have been undrafted. Um, but we're not paying I, him three I, I don't years remember. thirty million either. No, and 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 good for him that he got it. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, so you know, this it's a good kid. Known him, n- known of him. You know, since his far Rockaway days, um, but yeah, I think we can get somebody in the draft. That was my only point. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and I think that's where the, yeah. they're, they're going to go. Obviously, but again, I don't know where you, you know, because if if you do that, then it's a, a you know an opportunity cost in terms of you could have gotten somebody else at that position if you're going to draft the defensive lineman uh, higher, right? I don't think any of us have a defensive lineman mocked in the draft above three. Of the third round. I mean, and that's kind of to Kyle's point, right? I mean, so it, if you draft somebody like that in the third round, I'm fine with that because we have four draft picks in the first two rounds. Right. Right. So we have plenty of opportunity at without those trading premium back. picks without tra- right. trading back. We mm-hmm. do nothing else. We still have four premium picks that we can really get some talented folks True. And, and plug some holes um, and yeah. just go best player available, mm-hmm. right? Because we still have, um, you know, people we need to, to get. But I mean, for me, if you were done with yeah, what you I were am, saying, um, so uh, for me, hands down, is Tomlinson. You know, as far as the the top free agent signing, and to be able to plug somebody in at right guard who has his experience, who knows the system, uh, who's an Iron Man too, right? I mean, no, virtually no injuries. He's whatever his his consecutive start streak is or whatever, and has right. played at a high level for years. In, Not the, just in the system in, that, that in the run. system that you're running, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, that was a slam dunk and a top 15 overall free agent, mm-hmm. right, out of 100 free agents that are out there. Um, so definitely a slam dunk signing, and you signed them at a reasonable number, at mm-hmm. your number mm-hmm. um, as well. So I would say that's definitely there. The disappointment, and it's not over yet, um, is that – JD hasn't had that signature trade for me where he actually gave up something in order to get something back, like a DJ Metcalf. So, and we've had the conversation, um, you know, in the text chain. I'm really on it, personally, because what, what did we talk about at 10? We got to get the wide receiver, we got to get the cornerback. Mm-hmm. You got a stud. You you got, you. what does Josh Allen have, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. What mm-hmm. what does um what does your man in, in Arizona have? Right. Kyler Murray. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so what changed those franchises was the number one alpha wide receiver, not a one Z wide receiver, mm-hmm. not a one <laughs> fake one B. Wow. Not wow. A, no, 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 no. We brought it up. To, we brought it to that. I mean, I had to because, you know, this was my disappointment. If it never happened. Yeah, but you wanted Galladay. Galladay was your guy. I mean, but that's yesterday. We're talking about today. Okay. Now. Okay. Um, yeah, Jerry, come on. <laughs> well, let me, well, let me pause about, you on that. But let me pause you on that. Okay. Because I, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Okay. Right. But, but here's the thing. I don't know if Joe D is that kind of guy. I think he's that pra- pragmatic dude. Right. That said, this could be a draft day decision. Right. This could, could. be something because because I, if I'm him, I'm not pushing all my chips to the table in the beginning of the free agency to do this kind of deal. I'm waiting to see. Who else is going to be signed, right? And then, based on that, who who who's to say that if let me ask you, if they would have signed Allen Robinson, would you have been like, all right, I'm off that? If they would have signed Allen Robinson, yeah, right. Where, where does he? Where does right. He so play? who's to say that that's that's they didn't have their eye on some a, a receiver of that caliber in free agency? There's nobody in free agency right now that I would have said. With the exception of Allen Robinson, I, I, but again, I'm I'm not paying Allen Robinson but, but the Al- that 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 they paid him. But either. Allen Robinson is not DJ Metcalf. Right? I'm not so, saying but I, right. Yeah. Yes. Right? 
Yes, but what I'm saying is that you, that said, you would have still been satisfied if they would have signed Allen Robinson in free agency. Sure. Yeah. Right? And, sure. And so categorize him as a number one. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But again, how much money did they give Allen Robinson? 15. I think it was more than that. It was five, I think it was three years, 45 mil. Okay. Question. Question. So, yeah. so my point is, so my point is that that deal can still be made. Sure. Right. So that's why it's TBD for me. But he, I don't think it's. Still, but I don't think it will be based on who JD is as a general manager. His philosophy. So and I, and before you go, Kyle, one one last point. I would say sure until the Chandler Jones conversation started happening and him kicking the tires on someone like that. But they never right. offered him money. Well, I, I don't. We don't know that. Yeah, I mean, it was said. It's it said. They, they, never they never offered him. They never. They never offered him. They never ordered, offered Marcus Williams. Again, it's it's about that was, that was my that was my B disappointment was Marcus Williams. But I mean, I w- I'm not paying him five years, seventy million. Right. It's like I'm not paying Chandler Jones that money either when I know that I'm going to draft an edge in the first round. Correct. Correct. So, Are you so sure that's, Chandler okay. Jones wasn't offered money? Are you sure about that? Say again. Are you sure Chandler Jones wasn't offered money? Yes. I mean, that, those those are the reports. Again, when 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 it seems like they don't want to show their hands, I think this is a, a, a general theme with them. They're not going to show their hands unless they know that they're offering something that they're going to that is more impactful than the other money packages that are out there. There, there's a trade that's been bandied about. A trade, a trade possibility. Now that because Allen Robinson signed with the Rams, correct? Yep. Okay. And right. Yes, I know where you're going. So, Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. So, so would Robert Woods be the number one receiver on our team? Mm. Yes, he would. Yes, he okay. would. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna. I, I, okay. So I'm just gonna make a. I'm gonna make an argument for Robert Woods. And that is coming that, off of a, an Achilles. No. ACL. ACL. When did he? When did he hurt it? Beginning he, year. No. Okay. So he, no, but it, he'll be ready to play. He's not a. He's not in not ready to play right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the preseason. He heard it midseason, like the week that Odell came over to the Rams. Was it that so same it was like week? Yeah, right I think, I think you're right, season. Brandon. Yeah, I think, you're I right. think they're saying that he he'll be ready to play in the preseason of okay. this year coming. Okay. So I think that that's what it is. And you saw me, Kyle. I sent that out there too. I was like, I I I kick the tires on this and see what he's talking mm-hmm. about. But go ahead, Kyle. Mm-hmm. So so with Robert Woods, the reason why Robert Woods would be intriguing to me. Um, is his cap number isn't terrible. It's uh, 14 mil. Um, he is very comparable to Debo Samuel in the way that the Rams used Debo, uh, the, the, the way that the Rams used him prior to him getting hurt and prior to the acquisitions that they made and the way that the 49ers used Debo Samuel. Um, as far as that that guy that can run the reverses and the 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 Rams and the 49ers have a very similar offense um as far as the McVay Shanahan tree they're all on the same tree and LaFleur is also in that tree so i think Robert Woods a healthy Robert Woods would make a lot of sense i don't know what you'd need to give to get him considering the Rams definitely want to get rid of that 14 million from their cap. So um yeah. I mean he, he's they're, I mean they're paying they're paying Cooper Cup the same amount of money that they're paying Robert Woods. And, and they're going to have to they're going to have to pay Cooper Cup more money. And I don't think it would it would take a significant high value asset. You might get him for get like a third done. rounder or something like that. I was going to say it'll t- it, it it'll take a 3. Yeah. yeah. That's all it'll take. Yeah. Yeah. And we so, have and we have multiple 3s. So uh, before we move on, I just want to make one little note here. I love Kerry's uh, uh, um, position on the D lineman. You know, um, I think, you know, like an interior D lineman, I think we need that. I'd be happy at um, getting that guy at, say, you know, in in the third round or maybe fourth or something, because I think we have two fourth round picks at like 110 and then again at 117 or something like that. But um, here is a, a position that I feel like we haven't really spoken about that has you know, I, it really interests me, and I think that we need it. It's the running back position. I love Carter, but I think we need a big back as well, a big back to establish that just ground and pound kind of thing when we need to ground and pound. 
or on the goal line show or my whatever. Face. Please show my or face. Whatever. You know? <laughs> What's your face? You know? <laughs> you know I've been, I've been it, calling for this for three years. Have I not? There we go. There we yeah, go. Me, me, and Car- me and Carrie were on team uh, Andre, uh, what, what, not Dylan? Andre Williams. Dylan? Uh, the guy that's on the Packers. Dylan. His last name yeah. is Dylan, though, right? Oh, every yeah. every, year, Dylan every like year we say the same thing. Yeah, you, you know what? Between I, I the think tackle I, guy. I think it's pretty much unanimous. Between I, I the guard think, guy. Yeah, I, I think all four of us were, you know, are, are on the same page here and have been on the same page here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm looking at two running backs that kind of fit that mold. They're not as big as Dylan, but they're big dudes. They're both 6'1", and they're both like around two between 220 and 228. One is Brian Robinson um, from, my, from um, Alabama, who I like, you know. And then the other one is out of Michigan. Um, his Haskins. Name is, yeah, uh, Hassan Haskins. Yeah. You know, I like both of those guys. You know, a lot of uh, running after contact, which is big for those big backs and for getting, you know, that critical first down, for getting across the goal line and just kind of like imposing your will on that front seven to kind of demoralize them. You know what I'm saying? And I love Carter as our running back, um, but I think we need to add a little thunder to his lightning, you know? And with the line that uh, we're, 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 we're looking to put on the field, it looks like it's gotten a lot better. If we get Becton back, it'll get even more better and it'll be problem you know for, even for more better. right you know yeah man <laughs> even more better. that's my point you know um, if you guys want to talk about it make it quick because it's time to move on if not we'll move on right now is on. there a fullback is there a fullback in this draft like we like we had kind of pinpointed last year because with the signing of the tight ends um you're pro I, I don't know what that means for Trayvon West well we resigned we resigned our fullback yeah to- uh, which, I forget which, his name. I forget his name. Back. I tell you, uh, um, Nick Bowden. Yes, we did resign him to a one year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we resigned him. Wesco, I think, is going to be gone. I, I, I don't think he's going to be sticking around. Um, but uh, I, I mean, he completely switched to fullback last year, right? He didn't play tight end at all. Yes, and then he got replaced. I don't know if it's because it was because of injury, but then we we got this kid uh, Bowden, and he ended up doing a service a serviceable job for us. And they resigned him. I guess they see something in him, you know. Especially in a league that doesn't really use fullbacks anymore. So yeah, so you know, um, just to keep things moving, guys. You know, we're almost done here, but before we go, you know, we've got a couple quick shout outs, you know, and the first shout out that um, I want to acknowledge is just a shout out to coach Steve Carroll, coach Rich Carroll and coach Clemens from Baldwin high school. They were our football coaches when we were growing up. Um, Kerry had a different coach. He had coach Shippos, you know, so shout out to him as well. Yeah. Coach um, Carroll is an assistant. What's that? Yeah. Coach he had Carroll is a D back coach, right? Kerry? Yes. Right, right. He wasn't the head coach, Carol, yet, but, um, yeah, he was still there. But as far as him being head coach, um, I think it's about 33 years of him being a head coach. Um, he is now, uh, I guess, retired, along with um, his brother, his older brother, Coach Rich Carroll, who was my position coach, and uh, Coach Clements, who uh, coached, I believe, he coached the, uh, the linebackers. Um, yeah, he coached the linebackers. Yeah, he coached the linebackers. So, um uh, just want to just give them a shout out, wish them well, God bless, and uh, you know, just uh, awesome guys. And then well, Clement, uh, Clements has a lot of time to play beach volleyball now. Um, yeah, it's a big passion of his. Um, yeah. His shoulder would be really sore afterwards. He wouldn't know if he could lift that day because he played so much beach volleyball the day before. Yeah, but now he's going down to Rio. I think he'll he'll be on the beach volleyball circuit down in Rio. Really? <laughs> you are hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, None yeah. of what I said was true. Though. Oh, funny. Yeah. You know, we used to call him Coach Clavin. You know, say, hey, where's Joe? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. And then um, also, let's shout out Baldwin once again. The Baldwin boys and Baldwin girls basketball team, high school basketball team, just recently won both of their Long Island championships. So, a round Woo! of applause. First time in history, any two coaches have done that from the same school. That's right. 
And, uh, you know, we happen to be friends with the head coach of the boys team, Darius Burton, classmate of ours. He was a year younger than us um, and uh, like 20 years younger than Kerry. But, uh, you know. Um, really? That's what we're going with this? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I look better than yeah, you, though. So, uh, whatever. You know, but uh, uh, love you, Kerry. And, uh, you I know, um, you. just wanted to shout out uh, Baldwin. Shout out Coach Darius Burton. Uh, this is his fourth Long Island championship, by the way. Wow. His fourth. So that's awesome. I hit him up. I had to text him. I was like, wait, you know, how many is this for you right now? And he was like, yo, B, it's the fourth one. I was like, wow, look at you, young D. <laughs> you know? D- Darius is like uh, a Jerry Tarkanian and, um, and uh, John Thompson with the towel. He loves like, the towel. Every time I see him, he's got the towel draped yeah. over. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. That's part of his aesthetic for coaching, yeah. you know? Yeah. I probably have, like, a pencil in my ear or something like that. What people might not know is that he, he was he was good enough to play both soccer and basketball on the Division One level, yep. which yeah. is, like, unheard of. You, know, you never hear those two things being played at the same time. Yep. And uh, I, I don't know of anybody since then that's done that. Yeah. No, and, in fact, he um, turned down the uh, – well, he didn't play soccer until after he was finished playing basketball. And he became an All American at soccer for two years. Wow. <laughs> While wow. he was in grad school. There you go. And ended up playing basketball at Hofstra under Coach Jay Wright. Right. That's yep. right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You know, while I was there. So, yeah, man, went to a couple of his games. And then, uh, yeah, man. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, so we just want to give um, our fellow Baldwin Knights a shout out. All right. And a congrats. And uh, that's it for our time on the BKBK podcast, everybody. I really hope that you guys enjoyed us coming back in the new year. You know, we're going to be coming back for more. We're going to talk more draft as that draft is upcoming, et cetera. More jet stuff, more football news in general, more just sports in general. All right. More fire. More fire. Yeah. Lakin, we're rooting for your boy, rooting for your man. So, guys, thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. So keep watching. Remember, you can find us on Facebook on our BKBK podcast fan page, Twitter on at BKBK podcast, on Instagram at BKBK podcast, as well as on YouTube. When you go to YouTube, type in BKBK Wordspace Podcast. Hit the like and the subscribe button to show us love, please. And if you can't watch us, you can just listen to us on iTunes. Go to bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. All right, guys and girls, that's it. Let's go Jets. Let's go Bald and Bruins. And let's go Team BKBK. That's right. <laughs>